Monticello, it's an Italian term that means little mountain. And if you look just behind me here, the larger mountain was also part of Jefferson's plantation. Uh, he named it Montalto, which I'm sure you can guess means high mountain. And under the shadow of Montalto, you can see again the vegetable garden and a small pavilion, which was based on Jefferson's design. This recreation shows the kind of place where perhaps Thomas Jefferson would look off into the horizon below. 200 years ago, there were just as many garden pests as there are today in some regards. Uh, there were still problems of animals getting in to eat the vegetables. So there was a very large paling fence that actually would have blocked off that view with the exception of the pavilion. And if you look at the gardens themselves, you can imagine the kind of labor that went in to working these grounds. The head gardener here was an enslaved man named Wormley Hughes, a member of the Hemings family. Wormley Hughes began his first training in botany under a Scottish gardener named Robert Bailey when he was only 13 years old. And throughout the rest of Jefferson's life, if there's reference to someone here digging in the garden, it's almost always Hughes, the man who would direct the planting here and who would do most of the physical labor. And people often say Thomas Jefferson was a gardener and would call himself a farmer, whereas that is true. Uh, there's some difference in being a gardener and a farmer as a plantation master two centuries ago and being the person who does the physical labor. In fact, one of the memoirs from a man who was enslaved here, Isaac Granger, made reference to Thomas Jefferson working out in the gardens below. He said, for amusement, he would sometimes work in the gardens in earnest for 30 minutes or more in the cool of the evening. So it's not as if Jefferson was never here. But it is certainly the case that the man most responsible in later years for the production of this garden was Wormley Hughes.